Hello. Thanks for having me in the house of Frankie. My parents decided to move to Chicago from Puerto Rico, where, we, where I was born and raised. I was 13 at this time. Um, I can honestly say, because I landed in wintertime and it was cold and there wasn't too many people outside, I didn't get to enjoy Chicago until the first summer, 1984. And this was the year that um, I had to learn how to become American. American culture and American way of living. Living in Chicago is a big city compared to where I'm from. And at the same time, because I was in a learning process and I couldn't understand English TV, I went to the radio. And radio was always a big part of my life. But when I went through the radio, then I found a station that was playing house music, what I consider house music today. and. Once I found the station, I was always listening to the station and curious what was this music and why it plays so long with no commercials and stuff like that. You know, I didn't understand the logic of DJing yet. Later on, I find out what it meant. I first, uh, first saw my first DJ in a school dance and I was like a little nerd asking him questions like, what, how do you change this record to this record? And what is this thing in the middle? And why you go up and down? Like I was an annoying little kid, but I was learning to what, why was the music so flawless from one to another. I think ever since I was 85 maybe, I, I knew I was gonna be a DJ because I, I was uh, intrigued and I found some passion for it. Once I understood the logic, then I was like, okay, I just want to practice and I want to do it. It's the birthplace. A lot of people can argue it's New York or Detroit, but we're all in the United States and uh, I think around the same eras of, of time, these three cities nurture and develop a specific sound and it's funny because for me uh, I first heard um, Italo House believe it or not and uh, you know we were getting uh, records from Europe to the stores I grew up in the record music business I grew up in selling records too so first was shopping and then was working in the store and this is where we develop so many different sounds from um, from so many different greats. I mean, from Frankie, rest in peace, to everybody else that was in the city. There was something in the water, there was something in the food, <laughs> but really it was more something in the in the speakers that people, uh, your ear became very fine tuned to this music. You knew a good house record as soon as you played, somebody put the record up, everybody was like, ah. So, there must be something in Chicago. I mean, Chicago is a cold city. There's lots of sirens. It's a tough life in the winter, but this is the time where people go into the studio and make the best music. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think it's because it's the birthplace. I, I wasn't born and raised there, but when I got there and I had to learn how to become American, that's where it was. And I was there at the right place at the right time. I'm also a graffiti writer. I was doing graffiti in the streets. I couldn't break down, so I was dedicated to the music. <laughs> I mean, through the years, I still maintain my DJ Sneak sound. Um, a lot of these guys you mentioned uh, in the early 90s or late 90s, we, when we used to go to Miami to the Winter Conference and it was a big deal, uh, we found each other in a really big party and there was 20 of us and it was what was considered the future of dance music in a way. There was Daft Punk, there was Basement Jacks, there was Armand, there was a lot of people there who uh, we were all in the 20s, late 20s, young guys, really inspiring, really uh, ready to take on, on the world, you know, so 
we made a pact kind of you know we say look let's learn from before and not fight but more unite together and i do remix for you do you do remix for me i help you with your career you know like that you know that's always been a good thing and i i don't want to take credit for whatever those guys did because they they're very talented guys but i was there and once i knew my street my lane i knew that i didn't have to go to no no other street i stay in my street and 20 years go by and i'm still in my street so those guys come and go you know what i mean and if, if i if i inspire i work with a lot of them you know a lot of those guys are really amazing producers you know but they're not true to underground house music they're only true to the business part you make a decision comes the road you say okay i want to be famous and make lots of money or i want to be with credit and be respected for being an artist so you choose Back in 2005, almost at the end of my vinyl era, after 20 years of playing vinyl, it became a very trendy thing to go into electro music and all this stuff. It's different sound, different wave, different promoters, all this stuff. As a person and uh, as a DJ who had been through America first and then through the world playing this music, I felt there was a lack of uh, a respect for it. And at one moment, I heard so many people say, ah, oh, yeah, house music is dead. And for me, I was like, no, as long as I'm alive, house music is not dead. I will push for this, you know? So then um, I'm a house cancer became the slogan for a campaign for me and my fans or people like me who love house music and underground house music to be part of. And it became a movement. like. It wasn't about DJ Sneak only. It was more about I'm a house gangster and all the people that follow me and people like me to go behind and push. And then as time goes, seven years go by, music change. I survive uh, trance, which I never liked. I survive electro from the 2000s, which was horrible. I never liked. I survived EDM which I still don't like, and we're still here. So house music has a, a longer, long lifespan than all this music. They're pretty much the same. I mean, Magnetic Recordings was, uh, I started in 2000, and that was a, uh, an outlet for me to release my personal music. So there was a lot of DJ Sneak release back to back. And then I released a few other from other people. The label I'm running now is I'm a house gangster. Uh, just to tie in to the brand and everything else, we do events, we do streams, we do same as everybody, you know. we It's a small, cool platform, but it's always maintained the, the pattern of delivering the sound and the music that we like for the label. Tough question. It's very um, small. <laughs> it's gone back to underground. It's um, slowly crossing over again to the mainstream. Everything goes in circles and Whenever people get tired of uh, all the other music, then they go back to house music again. It's a tool. I use it like, uh, at least I like my toothbrush. <laughs> I know it. Um, I mean, I work a lot with Pioneer. With these units, you don't need that stuff. You just need USB and you're ready to go, you know? So I'm, I'm very happy with uh, a lot of the updates they're doing and they keep trying to, you know, every year they, they come up with something new to make it more exciting, you know. But sometimes it's the most basic, is the best. It's the most simple, it's always the best, you know. Mostly um, 
in Europe now, these next five months between May and October, I dedicate myself to Europe, London, Amsterdam, Paris, mostly a lot of gigs in Ibiza too, a lot of festivals. So mostly I stay in Europe, and then after October, then I go focus in America, South America, and all that stuff. In a club, you could be more intimate and tight and together with the crowd. In a festival, you're in some stage like you're some rock star. And you're so small, they have to have screens. Because you can't see David Guetta when he's this big. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you know, not to this. I, I, I like doing both. I think uh, uh, festivals can reach a lot of people at the same time. But at the same time... A lot of people were there just walking around because they they can't find one area that makes them like okay I want to stay here. So it's it's a it's, it's big game and little game, you know. Um, I I mostly play a lot of nightclubs uh, and I enjoy whatever. If it's a hundred people or a hundred thousand people, it's the same DJ Snake. I'm almost 48, okay? I started when I was 16. I've had a beautiful, long journey, career. I've accomplished what I want. I'm still here. I'm still relevant. I'm still playing music. I'm still touching and making feeling people feel uh, my music and my sound. So as long as I feel happy and uh, everything is fine with if people want to continue seeing me, then I will always be there. I am an ambitious person. I have lots of other business I want to do. I live in Los Angeles. I have lots of other things that I want to do. Because I've dedicated most of my life to DJ and making music, and now I feel like, okay, I want to try something else too. But I will still maintain my closeness with the, with the music. I don't think it will ever leave my, my, my head and my many thousands of records that I remember there, you know? It doesn't go away. The great person he was, the great person he was outside of DJing and house music. He was a, a gentleman and somebody who, even in my worst times, even when I was upset, social media, ego, and jealousy, I can always speak to Frankie. And Frankie would tell me his, his side of things and make you feel good about it. You're like, man, you're already, you're already you. You can't be nothing else. He's like, be you as long as you can be you. So I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say because... I'm already tensing up because I miss him. But he was a great person. All right. Thank you. Thank you.